you know, this is year 13 for you. And you always have been, you have, the thing I kind of admire about you is that you almost have a disdain for stats. You know, you don't care about stats. You're not interested in the quarterback rating or anything. You're interested in your team winning. We've had these conversations before. So how do you feel right now about your career, where you are, and the void that has been left by not being able yet to win a Super Bowl? Well, I mean, I think you're ultimately, that's the ultimate goal. And you say that about winning, and that is what it's about, is, is leading and helping our team win. And so we haven't gotten to the ultimate yet. We haven't reached the top of the mountain yet. And so I hate that we haven't. Looking back at all the teammates and guys that have been here, you'd have loved to have done it in some of those years when we really had a shot. But I'm excited about the chance we still have. Every year's new. Every season's new. But I think that I've done a lot of good, you know. And that, and like you said, I'm not caught up in the stats and all those things. I mean, you know, last year I don't, and I remember this only because I was talking to my dad. He mentioned something. I passed Johnny Unitas in something, and my dad said <laughs> to me, his dad, who I never met, my dad said, uh, my dad would not believe and would have been able to believe this because Johnny Nice was his favorite quarterback. You know, so when you hear things like that, it's kind of emotional, really. Think about it. my dad's dad. That was his favorite player. And now I'm up there on some list with him, you know. So, I mean, I, it, it's humbling, really. I mean, I'm thankful for that. I think mostly I'm thankful that I've been able to be out there for 160 in a row or whatever it is. That's the thing that's most meaningful is to suit up every week and be out there if possible. And you got to be blessed with health and you got to fight through some things. But all in all, Peter, I, and people sometimes may have a hard time hearing this because I hate to lose more than anybody, but, and I want to win a championship so bad for our city and our team and organization and the Spanos is if we don't, I'm not going to be a miserable person at 50. You know, I'm not going to, my happiness isn't going to be only off whether we win or lose a championship. Now that I hate to lose more than anyone, whether me and you're going to play a hand of cards or whatever it is, I'm going to play like crazy to win, but I have it in perspective from a faith and family standpoint that it'll be okay if not. Uh, but I'm going to fight like crazy to try to make it happen. What motivates you still to this day in year 13? Well, just the pure competitiveness, pure love of competition. I love preparing and trying to beat those 11 guys on the other side, that D coordinator, trying to figure them out. And then on a Sunday afternoon, it comes to, and you walk in and you feel like you've, you've accomplished it with a group of guys, with a group of that part of it, the team part of it. I, I love, I love the, the, figuring out the sweat and the fussing arguing together towards one goal each week. I love that part of it. And and I and football for me though, I mean I, I love the game between the lines. I love the preparation part. But it really is the life lessons, the character traits, the character that it builds, so many different the sacrifice, the toughness, the dealing with adversity, all those things that strengthen you as a man, as a dad, as a husband, uh, that for me is why football really has been so special. I'll have those great memories of in between the lines, but it's the people and all those other things that really uh, is what it's all about for me. Philip Rivers on the MMQB podcast with Peter King. Thanks very much. Thanks, Peter. My sincere thanks to John Elway and Philip Rivers for their insight and enjoy listening to both of those guys quite a bit. So, 2016 season on the verge of opening. Many of you will already know the outcome of the Thursday night game and many things in week one because we designed these podcasts to be able to be evergreen. So you can listen to the interview of John Elway and Philip Rivers really at any time that you want. But if you're listening to it as we debut the MMQB podcast with Peter King this week, I want to give you a couple of thoughts about the first game of this 2016 NFL season. And, you know, my first thought, I think, would be that Trevor Simeon is really one of the most interesting stories that I recall in recent NFL history. He's almost come out of nowhere the way that Kurt Warner came out of nowhere with the great Rams teams after the injury to Trent Green almost two decades ago, and that set the stage for the greatest show on turf to happen in St. Louis. But what makes this so interesting is that not only did Trevor Simeon not go to a football factory, he went to Northwestern, not only did Trevor Simeon platoon for his sophomore and junior years with Kane Coulter as the quarterback at Northwestern. And not only did he not have a very good senior year and end his senior year with a significant knee injury that required ACL surgery, I think the other part of this that 
sort of astounds me is that even had he gone to a major school, there's not much of a chance he would have been a big player at that major school. In fact, he was such a questionable prospect that the Denver Broncos had them not on a primary list to scout, but as Gary Kubiak, the coach of the Broncos, told me, they had him on a list of, quote, others, end quote. Six players before the 2015 draft, six quarterbacks who were not highly regarded, who, as Kubiak told me, hey, these are guys that I just take one game. He might spend 30 or 45 minutes looking at each one of these guys on the others list. And when he looked at Trevor Simeon, he said, hey, I kind of like this guy's arm strength. And then he looked at another game and he said, I really like this guy's arm strength. And then he told passing game coordinator Greg Knapp to, hey, you better go out and look at this guy. I want you to watch some tape on him and go you know, work him out if you can. So the fact that Trevor Simeon is succeeding Peyton Manning as the quarterback of the defending Super Bowl champions, I think, is just an astounding story, and I love the story. I also love, as I said in the podcast, I just love the fact that Gary Kubiak said, hey, let the best man win, and the best man was not one of the two first-round draft picks. The best man was the seventh-round pick from Northwestern who wasn't even a good prospect coming out of college. So that's one. I think number two, I think – you know, you heard uh, Carolina coach Ron Rivera talk in a bit of a frustrating way about how hard it was to go on the road for a Thursday night game just after you get your roster set and how it was going to be a tough thing for them to turn it around, travel west, uh, and go play a game on the first Thursday night of the season. And while I understand his frustration, and I do realize that it's never very good to open your season at the defending Super Bowl champions, I think one thing I would say is, I'll tell you, if I had my choice, I would want to be playing Trevor Simeon very early. He's human. He's going to be full of emotion. And who knows what kind of player he's going to be in this Thursday night opener. That's number one. But number two, I have always found that teams in the NFL like playing the early Thursday night game for this reason. They love having a mini-buy after the first game of the season because there will be 10 games between this game and their second game of the season, and they will have a distinct advantage, both Denver and Carolina, on their Week 2 foes. So if I were Ron Rivera, I would not be all that depressed overplaying the first game of the year on Thursday night. Thanks again to my guests, John Elway and Philip Rivers. If you enjoyed these conversations, be sure and listen and subscribe to other great episodes in the MMQB series, such as my talks with Bruce Arians, Michael Bennett, and Jeff Fisher. You can find these on the MMQB.com or on iTunes or anywhere you get your podcasts. Don't forget to leave a review while you're there. Thanks to the folks at Digital Media for their production work. And thanks, of course, to my sponsors, SeatGeek, FanDuel, Harry's, and Blue Apron. Please support them the way they support this podcast. And I'll see you next week. This has been a Digital Media production. Find your voice.